Alright, um, again, I'm sorry for the snake. Sorry if that creeps you out. Um, I just want to, want to do a little video of discussion where I just want to talk about um, Arthur Schopenhauer, who um, I read most of his World as Will, Will and Idea, and I plan this year to read World as Will and, Will as, World as Will and Representation. Um, but I was kind of rereading some of World as Will and, Will, Will and, and Idea, and I was reading about the idea part. Um, and just kind of the, the, the things he was kind of saying, you know, and I kind of want to talk about his uh, idealism a little bit. I have a long, 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 long time ago I have. So, sometime this year I, I might like to do a thorough overview in, the, in, in, in these videos um, on World That's Will End's idea, because I haven't really done, done it as much as, I, as much as that as I would like. Uh, anyway, um, in the beginning of that book, um, what he does is he says, The world is my idea. When you see a sun, when you see when you see a flower, you aren't seeing a sun and a flower. You are seeing an eye that sees a flower, an eye that sees the sun. This is uh, Isabel, by the way, and she's gonna crawl all over my neck, and uh, I will re readjust her as I'm as I'm talking. Hopefully, that doesn't f freak you out. She's just curious and energetic, I guess. Um, he says um, that. Basically, the world as we experience it is always experienced in relation to something else. Um, now, he says it in so many awesome ways. Now, I love that. I love that that book. I have it on the. I have it on my Kindle, which is this thing, this device that I'm filming with right here. Otherwise, I would maybe read something. Um, but there's just so many rich things there to like just just sit there and think and think about. And. I just want to th th think about that. What we experience is always in relation to su to something else. This is not empiricism, mere empiricism. This is idealism. This is the this is a nineteenth century idealist, which is basically saying, um, it's basically saying that the world as we experience it is not of realist uh, objectivity, but is more idealist subject subjectivity and it is merely idea and whether those, those ideas have objective content or not uh, that is not something that we can really go into but they we are for sure that they are ideas um, he kind of says that you know we can't really go beyond and try and figure out what is more there beyond that um, beyond those ideas but we are for sure that they are ideas because we experience something in relation to to something else, um, ourself, our consciousness. We are conscious of that which is which is conscious in that. Um, when I experience this pen, I am experiencing this pen in relation to what? My eye, but relation relation to myself. Um, so I want to th think about that a little bit, and that kind of, that kind of made me think about ph phenomenology, which is a doctrine, which or it's a f f philosophical method and f and philosophy, which came from um, Eben Husserl, um, who has various various works. And I, I highly recommend those. Um, if you want to get a good good, good overview of the ph phenomenology, get ideas. Um, you can either get ideas one and two, or you can get the com the compilation, which is ideas. Uh, general general inter introduction to pure phenomenology, I believe. I have that that one on Kindle, which is this device also. Um. Yeah, I, I have a lot a lot of books on, on Kindle. Anyway, um. That why that that may, may make me think of phenomenology. Phenomenology is a th Theory, which is similar, similar to idealism, and similar to realism in very different, or very similar ideas, because there's the bracket, the um, epoche, which says that when I see this pen, I am not going to acquire into its mind dependence, mind dependence or independence. And Schopenhauer is saying that that, that, they, that they are mind dependent, uh, thus his idealism. They are dependent, and they are in relation to our consciousness. Um, and phenomenology says 
that we should not inquire into whether this is mind in it independent, which is what a lot of metaphysics does. Um, you know, so it's like a like a extreme form of empiricism, but it's you know, it's, it's like a bracket. It's a epoche in that um, it's like a, a, a methodological um, corollary in that we're not gonna from here on out, we're not going to study phenomena based on their mind dependence or independence. And why this is somewhat somewhat idealistic is because this is talking about phenomena as they are phenomena that appear to us in perception and consciousness. Um, so it's you know even though there, there's there's this, this bracket which says that we are not gonna go into this. I have a couple couple videos on this, which one talks about phenomenology and idealism. One talks about phenomenology and realism. But it's just, it's just interesting because it's idealistic because we're talking about basically what Scho what Schopenhauer is saying. We're talking about phenomena as they are in relation to perception and consciousness. You know, um, and the phenomenological doctrine is saying that everything that we ex experience is experienced not not as they are independent from us, but as they are in relation to our consciousness. And why is it realistic? It's somewhat realistic because um, um, I'm trying to say it, put, this, put this into words. It's re somewhat of a realism because it's the only objectivity that a, if you if you uh, are gonna take phenomenology as your prime as your main theory of that that you believe in as I have this what you see is gonna be your only thing that is real <laughs> it's gonna be as close to object as uh, as close to object objectivity as you will ever get you're just gonna say what you see is what what you get. Um, I have uh, many, many videos on phenomenology, so I couldn't possibly talk about it in one video. I couldn't possibly. And as I have 70 or so videos on this, I still have not, you know, done, uh, had not really gotten enough done as much as, as, I, as I have wanted to. But this is just very interesting, because when I experience this pen, I see basically an eye that sees a pen. It's not, it's not, it's not saying I see an, an eye. Not, it's not saying I see my eye, but it's in relation to my eye and to my consciousness. And that, I think, is very phenomenological in that, especially if you read Mer Mer Merleau-Ponty, um, excuse me, sneeze. <coughs> Yikes. Okay. Especially if you read Merlo Ponti, like he will talk about um, your relation to your to your body and such, um, and how that relates with your per perception and embodiment. Um, it's always in relation to something else. Even when you when I experience my hand, it's, it's always in relation to my consciousness. So it's it's very very awesome to kind of kind of think about. Um, it's I, I don't know I kind of torture myself because I'm honestly phenomenology is my favorite theory in mind and in mind and, and, and philosophy of mind and you know in me metaphysics and such. It's just really I kind of torture myself in the way of thinking about well how is it similar to uh, to idealism and how is it similar to realism. When the main doctrine says that you are not supposed to do that, and yet in in other, in other writings of Husserl as well as other phenomenologists, they say, well, it's about the it's about perception and consciousness. What comes from what what the source of, of everything is the starting point is consciousness. When you read Husserl, Heidegger, um, Merleau Ponty, uh, you know, uh, others others even like. Uh, Scheller and uh, even even the one who talk who wants to talk about like uh, the life world and the language of 
in the phenomenology of language, like schutz and shock, um, they all start from the per the per perception. Everything else comes from perception. Um, when you have a when we have like a phenomenology of so social sciences, phenomenology of prayer, phenomenology of religion, uh, all these things, they all start from perception. So I don't know. I kind of thinking about this stuff, um, so kind of my, what, what my thought is, is that ultimately, ultimately I think empiricism is the main best thing, and I think phenomenology is a big, is a big form of that, it's a big, big kind of, a big kind of, of empiricism. I think if you read people like Barclay and Schopenhauer and Fichte and Kant and Hegel, you will see threads of 20th century phenomenology in that. And are they right? Yeah, they are. Um, so I'm kind of, kind of, kind of uh, interested in, uh, in Schopenhauer more than I am really anybody else in the in the, in the, 19th, in the 19th century continental thought. Um, and I think. Inherently, it's it's phenomenological. It's phenomenological in that it all the the source point is consciousness. Thanks. Let me uh, let me let me know your thoughts. It was kind of a ramble. I kind of aimed to have more of a, more of a point to that, but kind of got kind of got rambly. Sorry.